I'm in San Diego, California at the ESRI Users Convention. It's Robert Young, and I'm fixing to take a ride in the Trimble Mobilized Aerial Mapping Vehicle. We see on top, we've got all kinds of sensors, and inside we have a dual screen computer setup. Looks almost like our server back at the office. The user interface is quite simple. Uh, it's based on the client server, so a server can control each sensors. Uh -huh. uh, we can uh, add more sensors on the roof if we, if uh, it's needed. We can uh, push up to 40 camera if we want, based on the client and server mode. So. Uh, if we add sensors, we need to add also computers in, in it. Interface to, to laser. We have all the statistics during the recording. We also have uh, the three cameras. Yeah, question for you. The. Uh, you be here tomorrow? Yep. Thanks. Nice. So, uh, here it's um, on the server, we have uh, also the ability to track the statistics for each sensor, how many frames was captured. We can capture uh, everything based on distance or time. So uh, each camera are, trigger, uh, are triggered by, uh, by the uh, software. And the, the, the triggering uh, system, if we set based on, on distance, when we stop at an intersection, it will not have unnecessary images. So the, the record was stopped. Right. At the, Puts it in a rest mode, so to yeah. speak. You got it? Like a pose mode. Right. Um, also, what else? Um, we have uh, also uh, a way to to add some information uh, into uh, into the database attached to each run. We uh, we can add a voice annotation on it, okay. so uh, the field crew can add note to the extraction. Like an MP3, an audio file. Yeah, it's a WAV file. WAV file, okay. Uh, with the position on it, okay. so on the map you will have a point, and you click on that point, it will It'll play, play the file. The file. That's great. So. That's a geo-referenced uh, audio file. Yeah. One other question on the, as far as the accuracy of this data, what type of GPS and is this all? Is this all the data going to be real time that we collect? Yeah, you, you, we collect the data in real time. Uh -huh. uh, now the the system, uh, the GNSS system on it, it's a PAS 220. It's uh, it's made by Atlantics. So uh, it's coupled with the IMU and the DMI with the GPS mm -hmm. to provide you a position. So if we you running uh, under a tunnel, it will continue to provide you a position. Right, because of the inertial. Yeah. And, and, and as far as when you're out and you have GPS satellite and GLONASS mm -hmm. satellite uh, visibility, what type of precision, repeal, repeatability could in, you... In real time, it's 1.5 meter. Okay. You can add also RTK network on it or oh, yeah. uh, Omnistar and you will uh, well, increase I think, the I think as a surveyor, I'd be a lot more interested in the RTK network, yeah. not the Omnistar. <laughs> Omnistar is a great system, yeah. but as far... I'm, but, I'm, I'm making this film really for land surveyors to realize that you guys have the capability of collecting this data and when we go for a ride, we'll see how much data, how fast. Yeah. But you're collecting it to a... In other words, if you show a data point on your map and I come back with survey grade, GLONASS, GPS, uh, GNSS satellite, RTK, how repeatable are the positions you see and repeatability? It's, it's alpha you, foot of accuracy. This is the absolute accuracy. The position of the vehicle, it uh -huh. will be al alpha foot. If you made some measurement, uh -huh. uh, the, the relative, relative measurement, it will be millimeters. With millimeters? The well, yeah, the, the laser, uh, the resolution of the laser, it's uh, the accuracy, it's 10 millimeters. I see. So, and also we have some, um, a, a process to, we can take the laser point cloud uh -huh. and uh, sit that laser point cloud on some control point. Right. And we can recorrect the GPS trace through that uh, way if we want a survey grade accuracy. It's well, great. Well, I'm, I'm excited. i got Francois and I also have Ken Spartan with me. Is that right? Spratlin. Yes. Spratlin, I'm sorry. <laughs> Apologize. Okay, tell us what's happening. Here we go. So, it's it's like a big camcorder. So, we need to start the record and stop the record at the end. So, to start it, the record, I will hit F5 of F9 to stop it. And for start it, it's F5. So, I hit F5. Here I can see the statistics for uh, for right, the Right, it says recording. I don't know if they can see it on the yeah. video, but the, the, it definitely and, is recording and data. You can check. Oh, 
here. I've configured a system to record, to trigger uh, the camera to take an image each four meter. Uh, with that configuration, we can uh, we can reach uh, a speed at uh, 180 kilometers an hour. So, uh, so the, the the cameras are again motivated in this case by a four meter distance. That's what triggers the cameras to go off. Yeah, and the triggers came from from the DMI. So it's uh, the triggering system. It's the accuracy. It's millimeters. So. Right. It's not based on the vehicle that we're in. Yeah. And how adaptable is it to any vehicle, or is it yeah. only certain ones? As long as you can have room for the computer storage space in the back, uh, pretty and much any vehicle yeah, will work. Whatever appropriate roof mount you need to, right. to hold up all the way. Yep. And he told me earlier, but how many cameras are on top of the vehicle right now? It's three cameras. Just three cameras. And that's the three you see here, the left, center, and right. Right. So we have a dual screen setup but the three cameras that we're capturing there's live uh, screens and again this is unprocessed data as he was saying earlier unprocessed we're looking at a meter meter and a half post process we're looking at relative accuracies of millimeters positional accuracy uh, repeatable this could be about a foot of shift but if that shift could be dealt with with least squares, I think that that's something that surveyors need to know and need to be aware of as far as data collection for some topographic work anyway. If you want to do centimeters, you definitely need to put control points down. Okay. Yep. And control points that are visible by the camera? Uh, like actually, an aerial or what Actually, do you mean? preferably in this case, uh, also visible to the laser. So a, a reflective sphere. Okay, okay, cool. That way you can tie the, the LiDAR data to the System. Much like a, la a, a laser scanner that's on a yeah. tripod, you're going to have targets that... Identical technology. Gotcha. You know the purpose here, and you can see it based on the sun coming from over the building. Uh -huh. You see this, this is lighter, a little bit lighter. Actually, it was much lighter earlier when you're going the other way. But yeah, you can see, you can see the shadows the, on the right. You can look at the quality of the imagery. And the wow. The, the resolution or what? It changed the exposure. Oh, the exposure. See how this one's lighter than this one because right. of the angle of the sun. So I got you. you can do real-time QA here and adjust wow. the camera if you want to to improve the quality of the imagery. Well, as a surveyor, another question that I would have is, let's say you drive around and you're, you're mapping an area, how do you know that you have good positional data that can be processed to give you this accuracy? How is there any way of checking in the field? Uh, with, with those lights here, it's, uh, it's the, the, the green paint. lights and the yellow lights, okay? Is that what you're talking about? Yeah. Okay. This, uh, dark, those lights are the, the basic uh, the basic quality check okay. for the GPS and also the PPS uh, formation. You can also open the uh, Puzz LV uh, configuration panel if we want to, to get more detail about the, the GPS, how many satellites are visible. And, right. Uh, uh, geometry of satellites, yeah. health of satellites. Where are people pricing out this service? This is a specific question. I can. Uh, I don't know. Seems to maybe yeah. refer it to Dana and uh, okay. John. Cool. Well, I really appreciate getting to see this, and you just, as a digital recorder, you just hit the stop record button. Yes. And, and we what have, happens now? You have a form. You can fill that form, and that information it will be attached to the the last uh, last recording. So it's under, and that form it's customizable. So you can add a drop-down list with the, the information you on want your, to on to your add. project. Yeah, right. on your project. And anywhere, any any time that we are in the record mode, we have the ability to record an audio file, such as uh, anything that would be important if we have a question with uh, what we're doing, or we need to flag somebody back in the office or our client that maybe something isn't the way that we thought it was. Right, yep. Well, that's incredible technology, and I really appreciate you guys sharing it with me. Yeah. We've got the Trimble, uh, and what's this system called? Trimble MX Mobile Spatial Imaging System. Trimble NX Mobile. MX. MX. 8 Mobile Spatial Imaging System. Wow. Well, I really appreciate your time and look forward to seeing where technology takes us next year.